Hello and welcome to the first video of its kind on this particular channel. Full disclaimer, this is an unedited video about me just talking about the current things in D2 and some things that I think would be neat to see changed. I'm making this video now because with how the development cycle works, maybe we'll see stuff like this appear like in the season after next or next season or, or next DLC. But I'm not exactly thinking that'll occur, but I, at this point I've seen enough videos with random 0 to 10 views on appear in my YouTube recommended that I figured, fuck it, if even one content creator sees this, then that would be, then that would be pretty cool. So, generally, the video things that I'm currently thinking on. Uh, are just general things. I know the state of the game makes every, uh, along with just marathons announcement and everything, makes everything about D2 seem kind of like a pipe dream to begin with. But that's the whole reason I'm making this video now versus later, just so that with this final inklings of hope that I have, that I will make a video hoping that these things will get changed. This entire video will contain just random smatterings of anything from like small changes based on subclasses to large changes which will be more talked about at the end since they probably won't be seen in general. So for all right to just start this off you'll occasionally see the FPS drop because I'm randomly going over to a text document to, s to remind myself what I'm talking about here. But first things first, in general, obviously game stability is important. It was stated that the server issues are going to be looked at, but it's that's been stated for a while, and until it actually feels like error codes are being worked through, and more importantly, that the game doesn't go down for 20 to 30 hours every time a hotfix decides to happen, I'm just going to say that first off is the first thing to look at is just look at server issues and just fix that shit or like dedicated servers melee tracking also is just so bad but that's been a thing since forever and i'm not gonna pretend like that's gonna somehow be fixed but anyway to get to non-systemic vague changes, uh, general changes to the game overall, uh, drop resilience, int and recovery mods from from two to four, eh, like from costing two to four, go and bring them back down to everything else, which is like one to three when it comes to mod costs. It makes no sense to me that they cost more. I understand that those particular things are supposed to be more like sought after or something, or they're supposed to be more potent than everything else. But intellect at this point is a dump stat. It doesn't really do anything 90% of the time unless you like really want to build it into it. And even then you only need like probably 60 to even to feel most of its effects. And resilience and recovery, like, recovery is so backloaded, you literally won't feel it unless you have tier 100 of it. And resilience, you just want 100 regardless, thanks to how the, the, just the game works. So I, it just baffles me that they still cost more and that they've been moved to be costing more, because it makes me go, like, why are we making it so that someone who got like a 30 mobility, 30 discipline gauntlets on their hunter are crying because they wanted that 30 mobility and 30 resilience because that means they can use a 3 cost mod to get what they need in stats instead of a 4 cost mod. It doesn't really make sense to me, or a 1 cost mod instead of a 2 cost mod. It makes very little sense to me why they cost more still. Especially now that Resilience got it nerfed and as stated, Intellect doesn't do anything. The only one that makes sense to me in a general sense would be Recovery for PvP. But it, like I think all, moving all of them down to costing 1 and 3 respectively for their small and big 
tier mods. I think that just needs to happen. Uh, other than that, I think what would be nice is if Lost Sectors were a lot more rewarding, especially with the sheer amount of, like... I know you can get a lot of exotics now in this game, especially with the new changes, but it still feels like Lost Sectors, are like, especially with the new changes, are just have been left in the dust. Like, their whole purpose is just to grind out the new exotic exotics for a season and then never be touched again because of how piss poor their drop rates are i think at the end of a like it's a, should be like a 50 50 chance to get an exotic on a legend clear and then probably like a 100 percent chance to get at least one exotic on master because like if you can't guarantee even getting stats that you want and there's like it's a one in eight chance you'll see the exotic you want or like a one in ten for in some cases it just feels ridiculous that the one place that exists that you can actively target at least target farm something doesn't really reward you unless you're doing the incredibly low tier lost sectors that take five minutes to do because you c you'll only ever see an exotic once every fucking half hour it just makes so little sense to me so that's the other change that i think would be helpful uh that or doing something along the lines of being able to buy something from rahul to make it so that the next e exotic arms you get in a lost sector is the specific exotic you want that costs like one shard in order to buy from Raul. That would also be super helpful. But at the moment, obviously, with the new cipher system, things are generally fine with exotics. It just feels like something that should be touched up on for players like me that like to just kind of grind something. But as for other things to discuss, I'm going to now go into just the general feelings of the different subclasses, mainly along the lines of just general changes or just changes to specific classes as someone who, as, stated, as you'll see, have seen in the thumbnail, as someone who's played this game for too long and who went to school for game design. I'm not a game designer by any means, but I have a general analytical mindset when it comes to all these. And it seems like there's some system there's some changes that could be made that would help a lot when it comes to both subclass identity and just general feel for all of the subclasses. So I'll get into that now. First things first, I think solar just in general needs to be looked at. It was so homogenized that it just feels so like every single one of the classes outside of casting their super feel like exactly the same to play. There isn't really much that changes between them and Titans especially just feel like the jack of all trades, master of everything when it comes to their solar subclass. So I have a few changes. This is the one this is the main one that has both positive and negatives. So if you feel like something that I'm saying is like holy fuck, why would you ever buff them like that? It's because I'm going to be hopefully generally like bringing down the subclasses overall just but making them each good in their own respective ways. Oh, hey, cool. Uh so first off, general changes. Bake Ember Vashes into the subclass itself. The fact it's a fragment is incredibly frustrating. Like the thing is entirely required to make the subclass feel good and it just and you just don't like there isn't really a point in it being a fragment. Like you only you will the thing I put here is if you do want like if you wanna not allow people to just like like you can just drop the number of fragments if you don't want people to have that many fragment slots open. But like at this point, that fragment is so integral to how Scorch and everything works on the subclass that you'll only ever feel its absence. You won't like feel it's active. Cause it's like, it goes, you go from like, oh crap, I'm using Polaris Lance and I 
takes me three full shots to get an ignite and that's just and so I just won't think of ever having an ignite to oh it takes two procs to get an ignite that's actually possible to happen on certain tier enemies and it's just insane to me that like it's you'll see that for a couple other fragments but like ashes especially just feels like it should be baked into the subclass and how scorch works just up all the scorch to whatever ashes is and then just remove ashes Okay, now to hit subclass specific stuff. Titans, like, <clears throat> I'll just go through this. Again, this is all for the basis of making each class feel like they have their own identity. For Titans, the only real change I feel that Titans should get are related to Hammer of Soul. I feel the Hammer of Soul should... Okay, there's more than that, obviously, but I feel Hammer of Soul should apply Scorch stacks on hit. May something like... 10 plus 5, assuming Scorches doesn't get pushed into it per hammer hit or something, something to make hitting something with more than one hammer actually do something, but also make hitting <coughs> and make it so that you don't have to have Soul Invictus to run Hammer of Soul, but also make hitting a boss with it not feel <coughs> like you're only doing it because of, because of the super armor and the fact that it can move and the fact that you can run around with it. Uh, I also have in here to give <coughs> a Burning Steps tempered metal because Burning Steps, like Path of Burning Steps right now just feels terrible and it would feel at least a little bit better if you were making your guns actually work a lot better while you're stacking it up so like massive increases to reload speed, handling, stability as you get more more and more stacks along with everything else. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Then you can also have it increase your movement speed as well, just to put all that stuff. Uh, let's see. Okay, before I get, I'm going to jump down on my notepad here. Let's see, because there's another thing. The main thing I'm going to actually go into before I hit the rest of the subclasses is general change born from just how generally massively powerful solar is going off of, let's see, the warlock changes that I have above. I think overall the class needs to change a good amount. The identity of each class is completely moot for solar. There is no real identity with... Each one wants to do the same exact thing in the exact same way. Heal forever, scorch, and ignite everything. I feel this needs to be shifted, and I think I know generally what can be done to do it. For one, remove healing grenade, as in everyone has access to this grenade. It, make, it makes no sense. Let's see. Yeah, no real identity. Let's see. For one, it makes no sense and kills the warlock's identity, making every class able to heal without consequence and without caring about even trying to build into it. May make easy access to restoration a warlock specific trait, i.e., make the healing grenade either an upgrade to firebolt grenade, because let's be honest, the upgrade isn't doing anything anything anyway and the vast majority aren't using it over the heat rise over just using firebolt to proc heat rises now anyway and let's see uh, okay or ma or make it a selectable grenade when you put when you uh put on touch of flame that or in the event you Let's see. Uh, okay. That or... Um, okay. Okay, this is just a break, unfortunately. But... So, yeah, those are the main two. There's also going to be something related to... the Like, in the event you follow my advice for... Com like, above... Or, like... In, War in Warlock, I have, um, like, some specific Warlock changes I have. With the nerf of Star Prior Protocol, this class feels utterly shite, except that isn't 
sure anymore this was like it doesn't feel too bad but it's not the greatest at this at this point in comparison to it's just a well bot as and then it's a well and sunbracers bot at this point <coughs> so i feel that should so i feel if they're going to keep nerfing everything around solar warlock to be because of the fact that well exists I feel like what they should do is just t convert it into basically a Well of Restoration instead of Well of Radiance and just remove the damage bonus on it. This would have the also benefit of making it so that you actually, like, there is a purpose to having a fucking Bubble Titan again instead of just, you know... And it would make it so well as, like, it's still important, but you can, like, balance around it. And people would have to actually, like, bring torches more often instead of just ignoring that completely. Uh, also, I think Starfire should work off of Radiant. The fact it doesn't still baffles me. Like, why, why does it work off Empowerment when Empowerment isn't what, like solar gives anymore it gives radiant so it's it just feels really weird it's like oh it's some it's probably some balancing thing where it's like oh if you could run healing grenade with this it would be broken but or like or like healing uh rift with this it would be broken and no especially now like it would just be like it would just make it feel just slightly better uh being able to like run torches and healing rift and being able to just refresh healing rifts i already have a build like that actually just this whole thing where i just refresh healing rifts and ignore the, f the empowerment part except when i'm in my well but yeah uh you could also uh let's see Uh, other than that, I feel the only other thing, like, the main thing that I was going to bring up below is uh, merging Heat Rises and Icarus into a single f fragment slot aspect and giving them a third one, something like the tar something like the target set, or Scorch, explode on death, perhaps. That or remove the need for... Uh, okay, get back to fishing. Before I uh, keep going here, <coughs> that or remove the need for he rises to be active to make Phoenix to make Phoenix dive usable or get to Icarus dashes. In my opinion, synergy should be crafted, not f not forced, especially given it's the only case of it in the game. And now to jump back to what I was saying before, in the event you follow my advice above and combine he rises with Icarus and make it one fragment slot, make eating a grenade, like this is in a court, like again in reference to having healing grenade be removed and or just given as a thing. Make eating a grenade give times one restoration and cure around you, and then do the touch of flame thing above. Where if they have firebolt equipped, make it make it a times two heal with a with a cure times two. Or if they have healing grenade equipped, in the event you make it a separate grenade while it's equipped. I feel this would allow for I want to heal my allies when I need to, but also but also uh, kill things when I need to. Gameplay loop the Warlock got to have be access to before while still keeping Warlock's identity as the able to heal real good solar class, especially with the Phoenix Dive times 2 changes. Let's see. By removing Healing Grenade in this way, this removes immediate a easy access to healing for Hunter, dropping their hole. I just do everything with a solar... Star Eater build, especially with the uh, advent of making Gunpowder Gamble have two fragment slots, because now you can just run Healing Grenade Gunpowder without even caring. Making them just the solar class that does THE damage. Uh, 
seems uh, it just seems like a no-brainer and gives them back their proper identity. Okay, mercy plant because um, I, they just become like they they go from I can do everything to I am the highest damage solar source mainly. I just do high damage. And then, let's see. Uh, the only other thing I have is obviously Mercy is still a, a still a place of easy restoration off of fire sprites. That I feel, I'm back and forth on whether or not that should st stick around if this is the type of direction to go with balancing just because obviously like having a fragment that gives you a small bit of access to like restoration doesn't seem terrible but at the same time I could see having it removed and just being kept on like the revive itself but that's up to the balance team at that point uh, the other thing I was going to have was uh, remove, like, in accordance with what I'm saying with removing restoration from the other classes, remove, restora like, remove Soul Invictus, like, the restoration from Soul Invictus. Like, instead of having restoration, just have, like, the effect it had before, which was every time you got a solar kill, you cured. Like, there's no reason, like, it makes very little sense that you gain restoration, one of the most potent, like, recovery effects, off of getting, a, like, just a kill in general, as well as ability regen. It's like, why, why is it not just a cure? I understand you put the cure on the hammer, too, but you could have where it, like, briefly stacks to cure times two or something. It just feels infinitely more balanced, and it would also have the added benefit of making Lorelei actually an exotic instead of its current state where it's a useless pack of shit because it doesn't fucking, like, it doesn't work because, uh, uh, like, you're just doing what, like, solar grenades, you're just doing what uh, your healing grenade and your, uh, and your sunspots do already. By, and you're just making your like class ability moot instead of just you know having times two hammer damage, which is vastly more potent with like synthoseps or something, or hell even just having better grenades with heart or better grenade uptime with heart. So yeah, it would make it would do a, it would do a whole lot of benefits in terms of class identity and Lorelei's being able to give you restoration is like one of those exotics breaking the mold sort of things instead of just a non-existent effect at the moment. Uh, and th that's mainly it when it comes. Or like that's the main thing for solar. The only other thing I had was hunter specific, where like everything like where it was mainly focused around just changes to celestial nighthawk, where because celestial nighthawk like celestial nighthawk feels like it's supposed to be a major melter like an in-between between just throwing blade barrage at something or six golding with with uh, the uh, star raiders but because it doesn't do enough it doesn't really do enough damage to warrant that but it also doesn't like give enough in terms of regeneration of in terms of regeneration to make it feel like a major melter. So what I was thinking was basically turning it into a sleeper stimulant shot or a sleeper stimulant stop shot where it would only like, if you get a critical hit with it or if you just hit with a six shot Goldie, it would then spread out and like burst into like five additional shots. like. Basically, you condense all your shots into one shot, you shoot it, and then when it hits and kills a target, it then bursts into like six other shots that uh, that try that try and auto track to up to five other targets. 
and then like make it so like each hit gives you a certain bit extra energy up to like half like the uh like the blade barrage thing does cuz i feel that would allow that would help get, like that celestial nighthawk feel incredibly cool while also not like utterly breaking it cuz it would basically just give it a cool extra additive bonus that helps it gain that helps it like compete with the other two options that are just strictly better than it at the moment uh that's the only those are the main like solar changes that i have up to this point uh i feel uh it would be like this with the restoration like condensing restoration onto warlocks and everything would give warlocks back their best like their solar best healing class like best uh companion healing class while also uh, titan titans become like a lot more of a we are like so like they're the breakers they're meant to be the people going in and busting things but not like meant to be like infallible necessarily like with restoration they just like as they kill they continue to re restore themselves off of strictly killing things and only with with uh, exotics and stuff will that shift and then obviously hunters then just become the like with resolve and everything they can become like the best at just being effective with grit like being effective with just doing raw damage or like just doing raw damage and bursts or being the radiant like weapon class since they're able to apply a lot more radiant than the other classes because they have a lot more tools to apply radiant versus strictly torches <coughs> so you could have like a solar hunter now actually want to use acrobatics dodge because they would like your person would put down a well your hunter would use acrobats dodge and then everyone would like do damage instead of just the current situation where you just have one well warlock and everyone else just effectively afks but it's yeah that i think i didn't like that that is the main my main thoughts for solar and moving on from solar i'm gonna jump over to arc just because that's a lot easier that's like a lot shorter and uh I'll have all this in the description. I'll just copy paste it in the description so that people can read it and in, instead of listening to my poor penman, my poor capability of speech. But I figured I'd make a video so people might actually look at it. But uh, let's see. Basically, in terms of arc, I think it's pretty solid at the moment. I feel in in terms of general changes across all classes, I feel it is pretty good in terms of what it does. It doesn't have a lot of fragment variety in terms of effective fragments, but it's also like really hard to figure out exactly what to do with arc in specific. So I think it's it's large it's largely very fine for what it is. When it comes to Oh jeez. When it comes to um, Titans specifically, I think Fist of Havoc needs to be looked at. It's been looked at a good number of times, but the main like my main issue with it obviously is that it doesn't have trample anymore. And while obviously I think trample was a bit much in PvP specifically, I think something like giving it a soul invictus effect while you're amplified would be really, really cool and help it a lot. Basically, lower like lower its energy consumption and increase the super's overall duration while you're amplified. So like, and then possibly give it a bit more damage reduction. But that's just a little thing I threw at on the top of it. Basically, just though increase its duration while amplified because I think that would add a bit of that would add a bit of synergy to the whole class as a whole. It would make it actually feel like a proper like super 
in its in the amount of time it lasts and the amount of stuff you can do with it. And it would uh, make it actually feel like something worth using over Thunder Crash because right now you're just like. Whenever you use it, you're just doing a bad thunder crash. You're just doing, you're just like, instead of hitting something really hard and then running and then just doing other things and then just going back to your neutral game, you're just dropping like your neutral game for like three, th like three smaller crashes effectively. And then the super ends. But with this, you could maybe get off like five or six smashes with if you start amp amplified first and that would i think that or just charge a lot more and that i think would feel a lot better and wouldn't be broken in pvp because you'd have to get amplified first in pvp and on titan if you that means you either get a punch kill and that's it <laughs> you either proc to knock out and if you proc knock out you officially got a kill and at that point i feel like you going ham with your super is fine. But, uh, that's the main, that's the only main difference for Titans. For, for Hunters, honestly, I think Hunters are fine. Like, their blink lets them close the distance. They're, they're a unique play style for Hunters, which is like a bunch of punchy boys. They also just, it's arc, so it just does a butt ton of damage, especially with, like, stripper pole <laughs> like yeeting strip, strip stripper pole so the only thing that i know is like uppercut is a bit lackluster but it's pretty fine for what it is it doesn't really i've been left alone oh well uh like stripper pole like uh yeah it's like pretty fine the only thing i would get in like and even like with the uppercut you can still use it in pvp and be pretty effective with it from what i've seen so i think overall hunter is fine the only thing i'd look into is would be like what was described in combining raiju's with blight ranger and then giving either or a new effect because right now both of them are just bad <laughs> they just don't do anything and they feel like two separate effects that should have just been combined together and that's about the only because like right now they're just two lackluster effects that are completely beaten out by just raid and flux as a exotic so i think that's that there and then with warlock uh, i think warlock is pretty fine at this point as well i think the only thing that i would change with warlock would probably be monitor chaos reaches damage next season because like in in a few weeks because it's obviously like with amplified and with this season's uh artifact perk uh this lovely thing it obviously feels fantastic but it's gonna drop that 30 percent or whatever it is next season and it might not feel good enough anymore because i already noticed right now like it'll get on in gms it'll get champions to finisher range but next season it might not do that anymore and if it doesn't then it suddenly drops it's like use a bit usable cases quite considerably so i think monitoring that and maybe upping its damage just slightly next season to compensate for the fact that it's losing Thunderous Retort would probably be pretty good to look at. But like a 15%, 20% bump after, afterward, but that's about it really. Uh, everything else about the class feels pretty fine. I don't think there's really anything else that I would be, ups that I'm upset about. The only thing, oh yeah, the only other thought I had was for Tikal Fingers, the other subclass. Where is it? Uh, the like, the uh, roaming super. I think it would be cool if, like, right now, currently, right now, we have both sprint and 
your standard light attack being a teleport. I think it would be kind of cool if the secondary attack, instead of being just a second button for teleport, became like a ball lightning equivalent, where you could just throw a ball lightning forward, a souped up ball lightning forward, and it would do a butt ton of like super damage. Like it wouldn't give it like massive range, that's what Chaos reaches for, but it would allow it to have a little more of like a application against larger enemies and not just be like, you wouldn't just be locked to getting your ass beat <laughs> trying to like hold down the tickle fingers against some some enemies. You would actually, and you ac might actually see that super and higher end content instead of just it not being used because you physically can't. But yeah, that's the only thing for Ark. Now for Void. Another long one. Uh -huh. Void, I think, is currently a victim of power creep. It's the fir it was the first subclass 3.0. And while it's not terrible, you can very drastically feel, except on Titan, of course, Titan is god tier, but uh, everything, ev the other two classes especially, feel like they just barely don't hit the line a lot of the time when it comes to their void capabilities. And like, outside of Hunter's Super like, and G-Falcon, which the amount of text on G-Falcon should tell you how much Hunter needs help, combined with uh, just generally Warlock just never being on its class anymore because Strand is just better void at this point based because of its super. I think like void needs a good bit of help just in general. I think main thing obviously undermining should go down to 10 discipline not 20. If I can have Jolt applied to my grenade, get free grenade energy, and fucking, and like, get like a radiant effect on my melee, all for minus 10 discipline, I should be able to have a 15% weaken on a, on a uh, minus 10 discipline as well. I don't see why it's minus 20 now. Like, back when it was made, it made sense because the game w wasn't 3.0 yet, it was the first of its kind. But now that the entire game is 3.0, I feel it should be a minus 10 discipline. It should not be a minus 20. Uh, other things that I came up with. Uh, currently right now, mo like all of the classes are capable of applying a lot of their effects with grenade types. So I think it would be pretty fun if in order to buff scatter grenade a little bit and make it actually usable. We made it so it innately applied a single volatile proc, because then it would pop its own volatile proc and it would add to its damage to make it feel a lot better. I know it already feels pretty good on Titan, but specifically Titan with controlled demolition. Uh, I feel it would also be pretty cool because uh, like Solar is able to apply all its effects with a grenade. Uh, Stasis is also able to, and Arc is also able to. I think going with that with Void and then eventually I'll talk about Strand for a hot second with the same sort of mindset of being able to apply these types of effects, like have a innate grenade that applies these effects would be really cool and I think Scatter Grenade would be a good fit for that. Uh, also, uh, Although obviously again it might it might need a bit of there might need a bit of balancing in PvP, but if controlled demolition as Titan can do it, then I think everyone should be fine being able to do it. Um I think uh the only other thing is void wall grenade I think would be a lot like it would be cool if it like if you took the size and width of glacier grenade and made void wall grenade that like that size and width cuz i think it would be c it would make it an actually void wall instead of just a void strip <laughs> and it would make it so that the grenade would actually have a feasible purpose instead of just being a grenade that does f like 
that just doesn't do anything except be in PvP compilation highlights when it decides to RNG work. Uh, yeah, those are the general changes I would have to void when it comes to Titan. As stated, their god tier. The only change that I would have to Titan would be like drop the healing uncontrolled demolition. Because as much as I absolutely adore it, it makes no sense that it exists. I understand that it was part of Code of the Commander, like I was part of that existence, but with how all of these identities work, it makes like really no sense that Titan gets better cure on Void when they already get like so much free stuff from just overshields now on two fragments and just free melee damage with grenade bonuses it's like and the and the and ha being able to volatile stuff with your like abilities is insane the like procking volatile two to three times per a weekend vortex grenade is very potent and i don't need like if anything it should give over shields like give 20 to 40 over shields every proc or something like i don't see it i don't see a reason why it's giving me like why it's giving me like a 80 hp every time i decide to, <laughs> every time i proc a volatile proc it just turns you into god uh, but that's the only thing that i take a look at everything else about void titan is literally thumbs up you should like this is the baseline uh, when it comes to hunters, they're the ones I want to look at a good amount. Hunter invis isn't useful in combat. In this day and age, it's more likely to either do nothing or get your friends killed as they have to two man an activity while you flank the PvE combatants. Dropping aggro used to be the king in D1, but it's now just a bad thing with all with all hard activities having lives instead of it being a battle of attrition, making you be being the last one standing because everyone else had to take or like making you the hunter be the last one standing because uh, everyone else had to take your aggro just being a raw negative and never a positive g falcon helps this a lot but i still think invis should give some form of intrinsic benefits beyond just an exotic we know heart of the pack is considered too op but how's about making a little Taking a little bit from Graviton Forfeit for the benefit of Void Hunters everywhere. As such, new Void Invisible, i.e. Trapper's Ambush, Vanishing Step, Stylus Execution, or Harsh Shadow, etc. Not stuff like Rat King or Assassin's Cowl, unless that's considered not OP somehow. Interaction gives you plus 100 to recovery for the duration, gaining, the, gaining a buff called Void Subsistence or something of the like, or having it just be baked into Void to Invis to the Invin viz buff as a whole this buff drops the moment one exits invisibility this allows for invisibility to be a proper survival tool that will actually help you get back into the fight more quickly versus just being a panic button that you have to take the full use out of to even start seeing your health regenerate as a hunter at least and watch all your friends die as your aggro is dropped to give back to the gra to graviton a bit i feel giving it the the dodging makes you invisible effect wouldn't be too bad of a thing for an exotic that probably eats that slot for trapper's ambush but i wouldn't be opposed to allowing its melee regen effect to ramp up to ramp up to vesper levels of like 16 of like 1600 percent increase in the middle of five plus enemies for your melee regen too either or would be fine with me to help make up for the recovery boost just being baked into the class as a whole and honestly, I feel that's the main thing that hunters need. They lo th losing heart of the pack hurts so much because now v being turned invisible is just nothing but a negative unless you're turning your entire team invisible. And even then, it's still not that effective because you're not really, like, you're not dealing with the problem. You're just delaying the problem. <laughs> like, if this game doesn't have a bunch of things where you're just running through a bunch of enemies and trying your best to like not like like we don't have stealth sections in this game even if crota does come back that's still just one section in a massive game about like killing massive waves upon massive waves of enemies so it's not really like invisibility is as stated just 
usually just a detriment, but giving it like making it so everyone, including like people that are like including other allies, get like just a plus a hundred recovery. Well, most people tend to be running that these days on other classes anyway. It would at least be something <laughs> that you would be giving to your teammates and yourself as a hunter who probably has 10 recovery, let's be honest. And it gives you the ability to not have to just sit on starvation and pray that enough orbs spawn that you're okay. You can actually use your invis as a survivability tool in and of itself. And <coughs> I think that would be a lot more helpful in making the class feel cohesive by itself without needing an exotic and then just being better with exotics instead of just needing G Falcon to feel like your invis is actually helping you in some way. But yeah. Alright, and then when it comes to Warlock, as well, like, uh, Void Warlock tended to give out a lot of its toys and then got none of its, like, got nothing given in return. Like, it gave, especially now with the orb changes and orbs being so plentiful, Starvation just gives the other two classes Devour and they don't ever need to give a crap about anything anymore. And it's like, why would I ever run Void Warlock when the other two classes are Void Warlock with more? Like with a 30% weaken on a super or with everything that Void Titan provides. So I have a, f a few changes to Void Warlock that I think would be incredibly helpful. Uh, mainly along the lines of it's said devour issues along with chaos accelerant so those changes will would be uh chaos accelerant as stated uh like i'm going to like basically go like how handheld supernova works i want that to be what chaos accelerant is if i have to go through the process of charging something then i want it to actually be something worth ch like charging for like Vertex Grenade and, uh, like, Vertex Grenade being, like, twice as big and stuff is very good. I think that's fine. Uh, Handheld Supernova changing the functionality of the grenade I think is really cool and is fine. My one, like, the one thing I have in terms of thought process is, uh, basically, let's see. Uh, let's see. As stated, it would be cool if, if since this is, was the holdover of needing to charge before it's used, instead of just upgrading the grenade like Touch of Flame, Thunder, and Winter, it instead changes the use case of the grenade in question, like how Magnet Grenade, a longer range thrown grenade, turns into a short range high damage shotgun blast and handheld supernova. To that end, I think something like Vortex Grenade becoming a pull in before instant wide detonation grenade when char when charged would be cool and allow and allow one to change from a area denial grenade to a burst grenade on the fly scatter grenade shifts from it from a blah, 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 blah. shifts from my change above oh yeah scatter grenade shifts for like with my change above Wh wide reaching will to proc machine so ba ba basically, okay, so basically, um, my scatter grenade idea would be changing it basically um, from just something that just randomly hits a bunch of things into its current form of something that focuses down on a single target and then procs the volatile. So largely what it is right now, but with possibly more damage added to it so that it feels a bit better to charge. And then maybe make like Scatter Grenade itself hit a wider area so that it'll like hit more things with Volatile procs and make this possibly a bit more tighter of a change. And then Axion Bolt could be changed to an Axion Lance or something, making it into one singular bigger bolt that does more damage and has a wider and has a wider, uh, let's see, shoot, and then, 
Well, that does more damage and has a wider tag range that moves faster or something to that effect, making it also shift from tagging a few things for a good dam for good damage to tagging one thing very hard. I feel this would make Chaos Accelerant feel a lot more worth the charge outside of just using it for bigger vortex vo volatile shotgun and make it a lot more interesting to play play around versus just being the aforementioned aspect but worse there are the aforementioned aspects of but worse in reference to flame thunder and winter which are just strictly better in every way than what chaos accelerant is in terms of how they upgrade their grenades because like they just add raw damage whereas this one doesn't so that's why i <coughs> have the uh, thought that i did obviously there can be a lot more fun to be had with thinking up different grenades that serve different purposes. But this is just what I came up with uh, as a piecemeal, something that would be pretty simple-ish to do. And why? I, so that's why I have them brought up like that. And then the other thing that I brought up is um, make it so that Devour, uh, this lovely thing, Actually, like, instead of just giving you Devour on kill, because that doesn't really, that isn't really, like, a potent effect anymore, instead make it so that it's like a Wellspring effect, where it gives you, like, 20, maybe, like, 10 to 20% to your grenade, and then 10% to your other two abilities every time you proc Devour on your Warlock, instead of just making, instead of making it, like, just you get devour off of ability kills i think that would make it feel a lot more like an aspect that actually means something versus just oh this is just this is just a fra a fragment <laughs> this is just literally a fragment light i think that would be vastly more helpful when it comes down to <coughs> when it comes down to all that but those are my two changes for arc, or those are my two changes for uh, void uh, warlock. Oh yeah, and the main other thing, uh, give like skull of Dire Amkara a 1.75 times multiplier to like Nova Bomb, or just multiply Nova Bomb by like 1.5 in terms of its damage currently, and just make that its normal damage. Because holy crap, they do, like, Nova Bomb is just sh really crappy, like, Deedle Storm. Like, it just is nothing. It does nothing. It's a, like, it's a slightly potent grenade on a super cooldown, and it doesn't feel good in the game anymore. It, like, it needs help. Like, both versions just need help in either the form of an exotic amp or just an, another amp in general because that combined with the fact that Void Warlock just feels bad doesn't just it just doesn't help anything at all all right now go from here to stasis because like that's all the void changes so now let's that'll shift over to stasis changes uh, major thing would be quality of life change, just bake fissures into the class itself. It's the same thing as Ashes, where you will only ever fe feel its absence, because it literally just adds 15% to your overall damage, or like 12.5% to your overall damage, and the radius of everything. And with how it works right now, it tends to like not function because for some reason that added a additional range doesn't count as the original base like it just counts as stasis damage it doesn't count as like the grenade or something for some reason so i think just baking it into the subclass would not only help bolster stasis's overall power since all stasis builds would be able to have one more fragment in them but also it would help a lot when it comes to just overall game stability because you would no longer have to worry about calculating two separate radiuses for some reason. You just calculate the first radius at the increased like damage and width. So I think that would just help a bunch. Also revert the 
rhyme change in PVE, the amount of like either revert the rhyme change for PVE specifically or make it so that the stasis over like it you don't get health anymore and it just gives you stasis over shield because right now rhyme is a completely useless fragment like you completely killed it it doesn't fucking do anything anymore <laughs> like because of the fact that you have to be full health for it to give you an over shield if you get hit by literally anything in this video game you will not be able to get a stasis over shield because you will get like 3 hp off of the off of all of the stasis fragments you form even as a titan of all things and you will never hit the stasis over shield unless you're at full hp to begin with and at that point there is no like at that point it just You'll you'll get half an over shield, at at best, and it just there's no like you completely killed the fragment, and it if you're just going to make it not give a good enough amount of healing to actually get your health like back to full, then you should just have it be the over shield so that you'll at least get a sliver of damage reduction from the fragment. I don't see why it, like right now it just doesn't do anything anymore. Oh, and one final general change. Make it so that enemies don't go flying away from the stasis crystals when you blow them up. They are, like, the only thing... Like, it was funny when that, that first came out, watching enemies go flying into the abyss. But with how the servers work and how insta unstable everything is, everything just pops all over the place whenever this happens and half if not all of your stasis crystal damage ends up getting just fully negated because the enemy went flying off into the corner popped back because of latency and then just didn't do you just they just took no damage it just it's just not like especially on titan i noticed this effect so heavily because it like you throw you like you th you throw down your super you th you like try and break some crystals for enemies and like you just do nothing because the crystals just aren't able to connect with ha like half of the crystals just don't connect with the enemy that got sent Mach 10 into some uh, into the stratosphere and it just it just seems like it would be a lot better if the crystals just didn't have a knockback and just allowed you to just do raw damage with them But yeah, when it comes to class-specific changes, I think the only change would be lowering the tier of Behemoth by one, because right now it just, Behemoth just, it isn't what it used to be, because like it's been nerfed into the ground. It doesn't, like, it's not going to do anything in PvP because of how much, how much you have to, like, spend to make it do each of its slams and in pve it's uh, generally effective against massive targets but that's it everything else you're just not able to do much of anything with like you're just able to fill the world with crystals but then as stated everything just gets sent to guam anyway so either lower its tier or do the change that i did above with or like that i detailed above with the crystals not sending things 40 yards across the map and either or or both would make the super actually feel useful but everything else but about stasis titan is pretty fine it <coughs> doesn't feel too bad it's not like for stasis it's pretty okay uh for hunters uh, Bacchus needs the you can't gain class ability while light shift is active removed. Now that it doesn't actually buff anything that a leg armor mod wouldn't do better, the fact it can't be consistently cycled makes the exotic entirely useless. Other than that, the class itself is fine. At least, at least if rhyme is reverted, if it isn't, the class is not not like the class isn't really going to do much of anything anyway. But like. That you're also like, are like it was stated that you're reverting, you're finally reverting the change on renewal grasp and letting it actually have a dusk field cooldown. So hunters are fine with renewal grasp now. Uh, Warlocks, I see no issue because Osmiomancy is great. The only problem, or the only change, would be reducing the cooldown on turrets and/or making the freeze and one, 
and are making them freeze in one burst in PvE. Right now, <coughs> uh, they feel like just not great because you you can't freeze a target instantly and it takes 40 years to set them up and then you can't do anything. <coughs> and then like the first, the first thing they do is they just slow a target. They don't really do anything else. So like you can throw two out and then maybe freeze one target versus just throwing an Osmeomancy snap freeze and then freezing the entire room and getting your snap freeze back. So with how the sandbox is right now, like back in the day turrets were great because the sand, like you wanted to be really, really slow. But now with how fast everything is, like turrets I feel should at the very least either have a vastly lower cooldown so you can have a lot more fun with them or they should freeze in one burst or both just so that they can actually like do stuff. <coughs> <laughs> I have a buddy. So, like, but that's, I think, the only thing Warlocks could need help with. Everything else Warlocks do is pretty potent with Osmeomancy. So, Osmeomancy, Ice Flare, and you're golden, and you're basically one of the best. So, it's quite fine with me. Alright, now we need to go over to Strand Changes. Strand Changes, like, the only change that I have is basically just... Like, to go along with my void change above with every class should have some way of getting their active effects on a grenade. I think a frag grenade type grenade that severs everything in its blast radius would be pretty good. It would make it, li like, I just think that would be a fun thing to have to be able to just tech into if you want to. But, uh... Or obviously any other form of, like, it would just burst in a weave of, like, basically how tangles explode, except it's a fry grenade and it severs everything. Uh, especially now with the sever changes and the suspend changes, it would make it so that, like, it would feel a lot more like there is an option to do that versus, ju especially for warlocks, versus just being like, oh, cool, I just lose one of my main CC tools. Awesome. <sighs> Uh, other than that, tight, like Strand is basically the baseline at this point. It's so well designed. It's the main. It's the only reason Lightfall is worth buying if you care about gameplay over story. Like <coughs> Titans are great. Like especially with the new changes, like bringing down some of the problem elements. I think like Titans are great. Hunters are incredibly great, especially with like Kartak knees, whatever the. I don't know how to say that. Facade. And just being able to just, with Sever plus Woven Mail, be literal, like, unkillable. And just, uh, Warlocks are also fantastic with their, uh, like, just everything that they do. They're, like, they're like the one, cla like, one of the few ways Warlocks can feel, like, super potent in this game at the moment. And it's really, really nice, so... That's it. So, there we go. Not the most eloquent in speech, but those are all of my main abil like standard changes that I think could happen before final shape or at or during final shape. Uh, other than that, I think I have a few other changes to go over mainly along the lines of like just bigger massive changes that require like the team to actually give a heck about Destiny 2 which we know that isn't the case so if you want to just click off the video now that's fine but this are, these are the changes that I think need to systematically happen if this game wants to continue past final shape like this game like yeah so uh, first of all, Digital Archive, the ability to go back and play old seasonal missions, watch old seasonal cutscenes, get new here. Here's effectively what happened cutscenes. So many good things like Season of the Haunted and Season of the Seraph will never, will never be experienced even slightly by new players. And it's such a shame that some really nice long form writing will literally never be understood by a continually growing amount of player ba of the player base. <coughs> 
I knew I, that plus bringing back stuff like the Red War and po possibly little micro looks into the less glamorous stuff just just for context like uh, the final missions of Warmind for cuts after a cutscene explains the rest of it or something like that or like Curse of Osiris or something just allow people to actually get invested in the uh, invested in this world instead of taking it all instead of just like taking it all away yearly and making it so that any new player just has literally no way of getting into it. Uh, dedicated servers, or at least <coughs> make melees client side instead of server side. The stupid, the stupidity of literally mag of literally magneting, magneting to someone, uh, someone only for the game to say no actually is just really dumb. The fact is even start. How to do effect PVE is is a problem. Just let us hit what the game, what our game tells us we hit. Uh, and then even like we like, ghost melees are a thing on both sides too. Everyone sees the magnet, and then the damage just doesn't go through. And it's like why, why is the game just not defaulting to oh we proc to the magnet do damage, regardless of how long it takes to do the damage. It just it just makes no sense to me. Uh, uh, but yeah, like, and then I just go into a bunch of a little bit of a tirade about how it's taken this long for that to be even a thing, and how it, like, this game will never be anything in the eyes of any form of a PvP thing, and, like, if, if Halo infinite is able to do a melee system better than you then that's then better than your 10 year old game then that's not really good especially when you used to be able to do it do it and in, in said halo games anyway speaking of all that pain pvp changes to bounce off that point i'm not a pvp player by trade but i feel i should at least acknowledge it, its player base i feel three Three maps per expansion is not too hard to ask for, and the fact that it is is depressing to, and shows the terrible state that this game is being left in. Other things besides that, I think, need to be done to make the game actually fun. Drop special spawn, like spawns and put create, like drop drop special being like being something that you have on spawn, and and put special crates back in the game. Uh, so that people can't just like walk up and one shot people for free. And service to making the game slow, and making the game slower as well. I know the checkmate is going to be a thing, but just in ge uh, checkmate is going to be a thing, and this and checkmate might be like the game mode for people like me that want to play the game at a slower cadence. But uh, just as something to say right now. Uh, just in general, it might be nice to go back to the Halo days of do of doing things. Make it impossible to get to get crit while having shields up. Make it so so making it so one ma mainly needs to land those powerful blows at the end instead of every single time. Obviously, snipers would punch through that, but that's what I. That's generally like just the general thing. I see that would help make the game just that tish slower. Uh, I'm not sure if the PvP community as a whole will like such a change, but it feels like, like to me it would add for more enriching f fights along with the special change and make the game over overall that little bit slower to let more people actually play it instead of just get instead of just get do like domed and kicked back to the respawn screen. Probably need to rework a few grenades to not do the ludicrous 150 damage to make them do like 100 instead so as to make more to make them more a tool to get to the red health instead of just like a tool to get to the red health instead of just the solution to literally every engagement like they are right now and those are the main changes that i came up with as i said i don't really play pvp super much but as someone who has still played this game a heck ton and done the weeklies for quite a while, including the PvP ones, these are the changes that I feel would make the game at least feel like l full sandbox changes that would help the game feel a lot better. And then Gambit, I know Gambit's not going to be played for, like not going to be touched forever, but I'm going to put a paragraph in here anyway. 
uh, remove invaders and make it a full PvE contest instead of just whoever invades the f like first wins. This would likely require a rework on how many motes one needs to obtain, probably like double the amount plus, and how the primeval is defended. Perhaps blockers heal the primeval while they are on the field. But it feels like that would be a bit more engaging of a third contest ins instead of it just being PvE, but with a random red guy ruining your ruining your fun sometimes. That or make it so pe people get to invade on the losing team, not the winning team. I know that was experimented with, and it feels like the only easy way to make the game mode at least stomachable, as it wouldn't be nearly as like first invade wins. Those are the main two things I had thought of for Gambit, just off the top of my head, as something that would be pretty, like, that would help the game mode a lot more. But, yeah, those are basically every change that I had. I'm just, I'm going to put a transcript of my text document in the description for those that just want to read a Reddit post. But, uh... <coughs> I know I didn't do a t super good job at, at going through my solar section because I kind of, I wrote that in two, p two chunks and it was not the greatest, but overall those are the main changes I think would help this game a heck of a lot at like just being better, helping with identity of like solar specifically, and then helping with just bringing up a few of the stragglers around the subclasses and whatnot. That's uh, that's my main thought, though, and uh, I hope this wasn't too much of an ear pain to get through if you made it this far. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed, and if you have any thoughts about what I've said, feel free to discuss such or go yell at your favorite content creator to discuss such. Uh, either way, thank you for watching, and I got through a lot of my fish, so yippee. <laughs> yeah, have a good rest of your whatever it happens to be. Ta-ta for now.